I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing: I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now, just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. The working man is a sucker. Hey, everybody! Welcome to Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host Ed McGowan here in a break room with my co-host Josh Ricardo. What's up, dude? Hey, what's up? Hey, how you feeling? I'm all right. I've been fighting this depression. I'm a professional depression fighter. Like okay. I'm a fucking ninja. Mm-hmm. 17 years of therapy. Mm-hmm. Eddie oh, McGee. shit. 17 years of therapy. And 10 different variations. We're talking group therapy, adult survivors of child abuse, sex addicts anonymous, SLA. I mean, I've, I've you name it, I've been to the group. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I'm professional. But it is like a linger... Okay, how do I put this? What I've learned to do with fighting depression is what deodorant does for some people's like bad BO. I'm a little stoned. I feel like I fight it to where it's a faint smell. Okay. I'm not necessarily smelling like I'm working in the yard. Uh huh. But I've definitely, you know, it's been a day. I feel like you're using that metaphor because I got a little sweat going on. <laughs> I can't help I, I feel my like, brain picks up. I feel, I feel like, it wasn't an active thought, but maybe. I, I, feel, I feel like, like after the setup, you're like, I'm going to just use a, a BO metaphor right here. I'm just trying you to You don't drop. stink, though. Be, would, but it's the faint. I it's would be the real faint. Yeah, right. It's my deodorant. It's working class that's, the most, that's why I put this fucking gun out, right? This little Nerf gun cost me like 45 bucks. It's because I got a Peter Pan complex. And couldn't afford anything fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, I I used it under the veil of I have a son. (laughs) My son's not even two. You're dragging him around the store with you? (laughs) Come on, come on, come on. You got to be in here while I buy this. Why are you out of the stroller? (laughs) Walk. Walk with me. Uh, But it's been a, yeah. It's been a a little thing. Plus work shit, dude. I get that. You know, this fucking comedy shit. Well, here's here's what I find. I'll say this: uh, when I'm not like crazy busy, that's when it all sleep steeps in. Sli- oh, steep, all those like slips in poison, all the, all the yeah, poison. Yeah, 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 totally it's right. Just to taint, yeah, taint mm-hmm. the water supply. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I'm crazy busy, it's just it fills. Yeah, it nah, fills maybe the that's noise. What it is for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. I'm not busy enough. Yeah, but you know what? I'm in like a hmm. I'm in like a phase where, like, I was on the train. Going to a spot a couple nights ago, and I wrote maybe ten jokes on the train. Ooh, ten legitimate jokes. I'm gonna try, not just like filler where I wanted to do the exercise. Yeah, like inspiration. Yeah, that's and I was not gonna go to this gig. I just was so lazy. I didn't want to do it. And then it was a 45 minute. It was in Brooklyn, and I wrote ten jokes. So. I think that's just kind of where I'm at, but when your calendar's not full, that almost stings you even more. You're like, yo, where am I going to do these jokes this month? Yeah, but I'll say this, though. Ten jokes, that's the most productive. That's more productive than doing ten spots. I don't disagree. I think it's an ebb and flow and balance, right? Yeah. I think comparison's a killer of all joy. You know, that's a famous sure. saying. Yeah, right, right. And, you know, I'm not necessarily comparing myself to any one individual. It's I'm kind of above that portion of my career. It's the overall... Like, I just want to sell tickets and, and do great shows, man. And I feel like I'm a little bit of a gig hangover because we had some popping gigs yeah, recently. Yeah, yeah. And I had some fire, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. sets. Totally. And, you know, we were putting together some, you know, creative projects with my material that I had to send out. And I just didn't feel like I felt when I was doing the gigs. Oh, totally. And I know that's like a dumb thing to say because no one does. No, but well, that's the thing is like when you're watching back the set, like you, when you're up there killing, the the set that you're watching back is never as good as oh, what it was when you were up there because you, <laughs> you're just watching yourself talk. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you can't put like, you know, if you did a, a highlight reel for a football player, you could say, you know, it was fourth and one, right. third and seventeen, and yeah, this guy right. came up big, kind right. of thing. You know, yeah, like the yeah. the moment. Yeah. They can't put that in a highlight can't reel say for some a lady and phone went off and then everybody no, started like that talking. that one gig, those then, people were awful. I, you know, they should give me some. I should get some kind of revive them for the dead credit. <laughs> Why can't I get booked? Yeah. Does anybody oh, you talking about after that? I bombed for twenty five minutes? I'm saying that audience <laughs> yeah, yeah. was tough. There was yeah. a lot of tough audiences that that tour, and I put together clips and I'm thinking, fucking a man, like. 
I want to put a, I want to put a little asterisk in there. It's still better than waiting tables. <laughs> <laughs> I always like that's my bar. I always come back to. It's still better than waiting tables. Oh, dude, I. I'm, I was going I can't down. wait to talk about the job portion when we get into it today because I have a good one for you. Oh, yeah, because I was going oh, down, man. so I was doing a little bit of show prep. N- not much, but <laughs> I did a little bit of show prep. Why Why do you think – so I'm in a weird – so, all right, let me ask you this question before you uh-huh. do your story. Okay. When it comes to show prep, I do show prep, but I also am scared of over-prepping because I am an over-preparer. Are you similar? Like, I always come up with one story for each segment. Uh-huh. Then I'm gonna run with it no matter what. Okay. What do you do? I kind of I I, I feel like I'm better when I'm a little loose. You know what I mean? Well, like that's it's what just I mean. Over preparing. I like I like being a little loose. Like I was going down. So my show prep was I wrote down every job I've ever had. Really? It's a lot. It was like twenty. <laughs> Even like your one like off, 20, off the book kind of shit. Like before I was twenty eight, I think I had. Oh, man, it's in my phone. My phone's recording right now. But uh, I think it's like 20 jobs before I was 28. Dude, that's insane. It's crazy. I didn't have that many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I mean, I got crazy. fired a lot. <laughs> oh, that's actually, you know, that's why we do this show, actually, because we both have been fired. I got, I got fired I've been a fired lot. in epic ways, too, like company <laughs> shutdowns over my being removed. Like, I've been fucking, you know, oh, you keep listening esc- to the show. Because you've been escorted out? I've been asked to leave... I've everything short of someone showing up to my desk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but I've been called on my direct line by CEOs of companies asking me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I've been like fired in hilariously fucking embarrassing ways. I mean, I've been manhandled. <laughs> and I've deserved it all, but I got fired from a a, a waiter job because at the um there was like a work party, like a, a Christmas party. And um, a week earlier, I had dropped <laughs> I had dropped a tray of probably about eight or nine dishes, <laughs> dinners, and I just dropped it. <laughs> and at the party, I was, uh, <laughs> I went outside to smoke a joint. I came back in, and I was talking to the general manager and then the like the vice general manager. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I just smoked a little weed. And they're like, oh, you smoke weed? I was like, oh, yeah. Why do you think I dropped all those dishes last week? <laughs> and they canned you? <laughs> like, it, they staggered it. Oh, they, they staggered so, it. But they decided oh, that night. Oh, it was like, my were... buddy goes, dude, yeah, it was because you told him that you, <laughs> you were high when you dropped all those plates. <laughs> Middle of dinner rush. I just dropped, like, it was like, everyone was like, what just, what happened? <laughs> I just dropped eight why, dinners. <laughs> why would being high cause you to do I think I just so I just like set it down wrong you know what I mean like when you put uh, when you put it but, but you were blaming that on the fact that you're not sober you think you would have not done that if you were sober I don't know I, I feel would, like you're still doing it if you're sober I waited it I waited I dropped a lot of trays yeah I mean so I, I dropped a lot like, of trays but no at that point like I was I was pretty good I was all right here's a good here's a this is a busboy story so was, <laughs> I'm a busboy I'm like probably the first time I worked in a restaurant really a and, white uh, busboy Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah what totally. a failure! At a whole hands, yeah, yeah. Well, it was, I mean, I think everybody was there. White. It was like in the suburbs. It was all white. Oh, oh, oh. I don't what think there was any. I think it was like one black, <laughs> like a forty-year-old yeah, bus. Boy. Yeah, right. There was a, there was there was a forty-year-old bus boy at one point. Uh, That's like if you get out of prison, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Game. You get a bus boy job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just all tattered. If you're up. lucky, <laughs> there was a couple of dudes. There was this guy Johnny. We called him Johnny Rotten. Uh, he was, oh man, he was a gross dude, man. <laughs> He's probably dead. Uh, he was like a meth head, kind of like, but he was like a great uh, fry cook. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how those guys are just like so good at that one thing. And there's so much fun in that setting. In yeah. that setting. You, you don't want to go home with the guy. No, after, like, yeah. I, li- the I, I ended up, this is a story for another time, but I ended up living with him for uh, a period of time that was just. Yeah, yeah, insane. You, you <laughs> live, live with Johnny Rotten, the meth head Franco. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> it was a. Oh. We were just. It was like a week of crossover. He was moving out, and I was moving. Yeah, in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is so even, what's worse? Which is even sadder. Where's he going to a better spot? <laughs> right. I'm taking his room. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's like one of those dudes where you move into his room and it all, the wall smell like grease because oh, he was coming home, dude, passing out, not showering after the fry cook gig. Yeah, he was. Uh, I, I mean, he was a nasty fucking drug addict. Like he was a needle drug addict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is always crazy. Moving into like a room that, uh, uh, like, uh, you feel it. Yeah, oh, dude. Well, you're just like, I gotta check the carpet. Uh, make sure there's. I'm not gonna stub my fucking yeah, toe on yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, it's. That's when you know you're really your life's going great. Going well, yeah. <laughs> checking for syringes. <laughs> I'm just checking for shrapnel syringes. You're on the carpet. <laughs> that was the craziest house I ever lived in. That house. Uh, that was like a fucking. Isn't that funny how there is no deniability that eventually, if you're an addict. You'll find a group of people. Addicts always find other addicts. Oh, totally. And it's like, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no accident. And I love how they treat all this shit, you know, addiction, a lot of stuff, even crime. Like it's an accident oh, that's sure. happening yeah, when yeah, yeah. from the minute you start having thought and you're like that, you figure out how to find other people who have the same thoughts. When I was a kid, when I was like eight or nine years old, I like looked up to the guys that hung out on the corner. Why? I don't know, I just thought they were cool. I like mean- the drug dudes? They were drug dudes. But I mean, I guess I should also mention that they one of the guys had a 15 foot unicycle. <laughs> so as an eight year old, I was like, these guys are awesome. <laughs> these guys fucking rule. <laughs> What's your whole like crack addiction with Ocho a unicycle? He used you ever seen Deadwood? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking guys riding a unicycle down the thoroughfare. <laughs> it's just you down the block <laughs> down Main Street. <laughs> oh, dude, I it, I was I it was so cool because he used to have to cl <laughs> climb up the street lamp, the street to get on the to get on a thing. Yeah, it was so you got to cool. be high to do shit like that. I guess. I mean. They were like, I don't even know how, if they were really drug addicts or not. I know the whole neighborhood was trying to get rid of them. They started like a, they started like a thing called SNAP. It was safe neighbor, safe neighborhoods are possible. Yeah. It was like a community thing. And then a week into oh, snap. it, in a week into it, the guys that hung out on the corner started writing, just spray painting on people's houses. Snap sucks. I was like, okay, where they win. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Everyone was like, okay, if you, you know what? They can have the cameras. corner. They can, hang, yeah, they can hang out on the corner, but I don't feel like painting my house again. <laughs> <laughs> it just disbanded. I remember my parents were involved, and my dad's like, I'm not going anymore of those. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I mean, you'd be scared that someone's going to steal your shit or throw a rock through your window. I mean, unless you're willing to go beat the shit out of some teenagers with bats, that's the only way. Right. You're getting rid of those dudes because yeah, right. they have to have some carnal fear right. of that whoever in the neighborhood is laying down the right the hammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's the only. I mean, I remember growing up, we had a uh, the kids were awful in our neighborhood, but they would never go to someone's house that they knew like the dude was packing or right. The guy was kind of insane. The, yeah, yeah, the dad yeah. or whoever was kind of right. nuts. Mm -hmm. Um, it's funny. I was <laughs> thinking about the job segment. I might as well jump into it now. Where are we at? Yeah, I'm about there. So the job segment, I was like, what can I talk about this week? And I started thinking about, so I I worked at Victoria's Secret. I was in the mall, a buddy of mine, you know, we were like looking at the door, thinking of like, how can we go in there and perv on panties? I don't know why, maybe it's because of the lack of the internet. Wait, so this was before uh, you got the job? You were like, yeah. You were like in the mall. I wanted like, to go in there and meet there? girls. I yeah, wanted yeah, yeah. to go. I no, I remember that too. Yeah, I just I remember I thought hanging there's out. So many hot girls just in there. Like, yeah, you would just every be... girl I like wears these underwear. Yeah. <laughs> I almost said underwears. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Wear them underwears. <laughs> she got them hot underwears. <laughs> Yo, those underwears are hot. <laughs> <laughs> so I just said fuck it, and I walked in there and said, "Can I have an application?" It was the only thing I could think of to get in without looking like a total like being like a mark. So. I applied and I ended up working in the stock room with this crazy, uh, like white Jamaican. He was like, uh, do you remember that group Big Mountain that covered Peter Frampton's I Love Your Way? No. They're like a, a, a ja a, reggae, like a, it just, it was awful. It, uh -huh. was, it was it was a really popular song though. Anyways, he looked like one of the dudes from that band. He was like <laughs> straight up crazy. He smelled like um, 
non like he smelled like, weird. Like Tom Hanks' son, Just, Chad Hanks. No, but he's like a like a jack dude. This uh -huh. guy's a straight up. He had he's a Rastafarian white dude. Oh, okay. And it was two thousand two. Okay, two thousand one. Uh huh. Uh huh. And so it was before any kind of like influence via the phone. So this dude was like reading up on right. shit. He was like yeah, going yeah, to the yeah. library, yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to research how to be a vegan. You know, he, the guy's like was in it to win it. Yeah. And he taught me how to like steam panties and shit. And steam panties? Well, that's what you do in the back. What do you mean? Oh, they come in these fucking plastics, right? Almost like chips. And you have to, when you get a shipment in, the dudes in the back or whoever's working in the back has to unload every piece of shipment so they'll like send you boxes of thongs and they'll be an individual plastic packing uh -huh. and you pop them open you got to put them on those fucking little hangers uh, then you put the hanger so that they look like they're like a wearable not like creased yes and then you yeah, gotta I steam got them uh-huh uh -huh. dude i have steamed so many hey, do they have to do it like does does the gap have to do that with shirts and stuff i like think that? everyone has i they mean probably I think do, everyone right? has right yeah yeah that makes sense right but i mean a shirt like i steam my clothes now a shirt's one thing a pair of little panties that shit takes forever man especially with the material some of that material shit, you got to do it over and over again. It has yeah. to be, you know, pristine. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The point is, the reason why I thought about this job is because I was so bad at the job. I hated the job so much that I did just good enough to not get fired, but they would just slowly stop scheduling me. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then Start cutting I, your shift. And it yeah. was before, like... uh there was no internet where I could check an online schedule. I had to call. And after a while, they would go like, oh, let me check. And they would just hang up on me. And I'm so hard-headed. I'm so stupid and hard-headed. I'm like, oh, weird. They keep hanging up on me. So I would show up. Yeah. And, the, and I remember in the back, there'd be like the break, like the actual break room. There'd be someone eating like a fucking little sandwich on their break, one of the ladies in the black suits. And I would go up to the schedule and look, and my name wouldn't be on. And I'd be like, that. Ah. Guess not this week. And she was like, <laughs> knowing full well that they right. just didn't want to have to deal with the confrontation of firing me. <laughs> I think it took me like a month to realize that I was How fired. How many other men were working there? It was just me. Oh, you were the only guy? Well, that dude ended up and leaving. And the other dude. And that, yeah, that, that vegan guy left. bounced. And uh -huh. then they hired a... I think another woman or something like that. And then, so, how much were you ever in the front of the house, or you always in the no, back of the house? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. It's all fact, women up front. Yeah, the first. So you guys you have to you have to you like touch to chicks and stuff for that job if you yeah, were in the front. Right. Yeah. You not measure gonna... people's bosoms and shit. Like, yeah, you, right. <laughs> like they get in it. Right. Because that's the whole point. They you get certified to tell people what their actual what the bras. Yeah, like, yeah. Find yeah. the best bras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, my wife. She's she talked about like when she first found out the bra size like you know what i mean like, oh, like how to do it well like she went and got measured yeah yeah type thing and like fitted i guess is it's like game I'm changing for, for some yeah 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 right like their whole total life is better yeah, for yeah. it um but it's so <laughs> thinking about it it's so funny to me that you went and took this job <laughs> because you wanted to like perv on girls and you're just in the and back I fucking like a there. troll <laughs> yeah like a piece of shit, shit. dude just get him in the back <laughs> like, blowing the bathroom up and it's right by my workstation so it's just a f disgusting environment it's awful dude well i mean, how old were you 18 20 21 yeah, yeah, yeah. 20, so you're just trying to meet yeah girls yeah dude I, I did i did meet like a serious girlfriend there though oh so it worked out oh okay and she was yeah. really really hot too the, uh, really I mean, hot. I just remember every like way waiting, hot for me. Every waiter job I ever had, I was you just like a girl. I was just like uh, new. Uh, uh, one of these will be my girlfriend. Seriously, oh, for, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Just you would just scanning. hope you could find a yeah, girlfriend. Twenty one. You're just that's you all. You would throw a rock and just take anyone. <laughs> like, oh rock, yeah, it, that's my girlfriend. Yeah, though. and then like they would see me get drunk and I'd be like, okay, <laughs> oh you're crazy. <laughs> Isn't that funny how it it took me so long to realize someone was rejecting me. Oh. Because I come from such a brutal background right. where people say awful things to one another right. and where it's kind of expected of you to like roast each other in a way that's, we've talked about this, super inappropriate. Yeah. I never picked up on any kind of subtlety, like even a remote subtlety, like, oh, you know, that, that was kind of odd. I, it would, I remember thinking like, oh, that was odd. Why would she, you know, 
blocker number. Like, like, you know, I, I mean, was, not like that ever. You know what I mean? No, you know I was, what I mean? Like, just like it had to be really no, obvious I, for me to even register. Yeah, it. no, I was, I was the same way. I was dense. Why is that? Self-absorbed. Like, what is it about our dirt know. brain that doesn't get? And know. it wasn't like I was being pushy, anyways. It wasn't like, you know, I was like, "How the fuck are you not talking to me?" It was just more like, "Oh, it's crazy how that fell apart." Yeah. yeah not right. looking at any of the no. signs yeah, of right. someone totally. trying to like let me off easily i got fired one time the guy told me to clock out and go home and i was like sweet it's early it's saturday nice <laughs> <laughs> and i was just hanging out at the bar <laughs> and he goes dude what are you still doing here i go i'm just hanging out why what's up he goes dude i just fired you i would go what you what? what didn't you use the <laughs> i have to be told yeah. like give me your shit yeah. fight it totally. has to be so aggressive for <laughs> yeah. me to go I think I just got fired. <laughs> well, by golly, I think this guy just fucking terminated my employment here. <laughs> yeah, that job, that was a crazy job. That was a whole hands job. Oh, that was the same job I was like a busboy. I got fired from there like twice. <laughs> And they would always hire me back. That's so funny. That Victoria's Secret thing, they moved me. <laughs> they just kept moving. It's like when they move dumb kids through the ranks. <laughs> Fucking graduate guys that can't read. And they're just like, I can't take this I, dude this anymore. Yeah, we got to. All right. He's, he's no future. This I guy's a care. lost cause. This, he can't take fifth grade again. <laughs> he would move me to, like, he moved me to the perfume section. It was just, that was just straight up manual labor. It was just me and some Mexican dude. Just unloading boxes. Lifting boxes, boxes yeah. of fucking perfume. That shit's I bet, that, I bet that was brutal. That sucked. Yeah. That yeah, that sucked. In fact, it was so funny because one of the ladies that uh was like a manager or whatever, she was like the hot chick. Um, and she sold like two days before nine eleven or whatever, she sold three of the hijackers like five hundred dollars in perfume products. Seriously? Yeah, because they a few of the hijackers were in San Diego to learn how to fly. Oh, they took right. flight lessons. In yeah. fact, my mother lived in the same complex as one of them. Dude, that's fucking crazy. It was crazy. insane. Yeah. Wow. And then I remember I dated a stripper uh, around that time, and she was like, yeah, they would come in here all the time and just get... It's so a, an insane cr- amount of lap dances. Isn't like uh, maybe like you're about to die. Yeah. Like, if you knew like yeah, your right. days were numbered, <laughs> <laughs> and they were trying to bang this Victoria's Secret perfume chick and take her to the titty bar. So all these stories came out after the fact, right? All at different points in my life, and they're all kind of connected because yeah. the perfume lady was the first one to tell me about these guys. And then I started dating the dancer, and then the perfume ladies. Yeah, they asked me to go to Cheetahs with them. They would go to this eighteen so did and up. She go? No, she, she had it. like she was one of those ladies that just think always had a dude. But just think if, if she, she went, if she went and stopped nine eleven, stop nine eleven. <laughs> she blew all those dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Changed the course of history forever. Changed the course of history. <laughs> she could have. And what's crazy is she would never get credit. No one would ever know. No, because she, she wouldn't tell her boyfriend, and then she blew all of the hijackers. Yeah, right. You're right. Oh, she wouldn't know. I made up a whole other story. But you're right. They would. They she would wouldn't never have done it. She wouldn't even. She know. just had to marry one yeah. of those dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. How many? How many blowjobs have stopped other terrorist attacks? <laughs> now I want to know. <laughs> I mean, if it's good enough, you can stop me from doing a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, totally. People don't. I think because I'm an old man now, the um, the blowjob with nuance, it's like as you become a wine connoisseur. And I feel like I've had a lot of wine from the two buck chucks <laughs> to the upper echelon. Uh huh. Uh-huh. But you notice when someone's giving you the filet mignon of. To me. Oral. To me, it's very. Um, are they enthusiastic? Enthusiasm oh, yeah. is really all. And then just no teeth. You know what I mean? Like that's. I have a very. Very simple. It's very binary for me. I'm yeah, like, yeah. You really don't put a whole enth- lot of she thought into it. Enthusiastic. Does you just she- took an hour to set up some ring lights and you, you give it <laughs> a like, two oh, list blowjob. Oh, a blow- two point. <laughs> <laughs> a two point process. That's the whole blowjobs. grading system. No teeth. <laughs> she seemed to be into it and be into it. <laughs> and I get it all scratched up. <laughs> That's it. That's all I need. <laughs> I'm not picky. I'm a very simple man. <laughs> But you're not. You're <laughs> uber complicated. That's what's so funny. Whenever something's simple, I know we're, we're like both dirtbags, but like, oh, we just come off kind of like, that's fine. I'll eat it off the table, kind of guys. But like in reality, you're 
a very complicated dude. Oh, I'm very complicated. Uh, but when it comes to sex, it's like, okay. But at the same time, like. With cheese or without. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically. No, totally. Like, when I'll, cause I'll, dude, I'm like a dog when it comes to like food. I, I will eat the same meal. I will eat the same meal. When it, this, this job I have downtown, this day job, there's a dig in. I eat. Oh, dig in though has some good stuff. But I never vary. I eat this. They have the all the same those sides and I, everything. I eat the same sides, like five days in a row. There's something comforting about that, huh? I just I know what I like. I, mean, I don't need to experiment. <laughs> never tried anything else. I mean, I mean that's this. like that story you tell about your dad in Italy all the time. Yeah. I, was just like, uh, I eat anything, and he's like, "Hold on, what's that fucking octopus? <laughs> what's with these octopuses and all this stuff?" I don't know. I like when it comes to like the thing. Like if I know if I like it, that's enough. I don't need, you know what I mean? You don't like, want to try stuff. You're not a trier. I will try. I will try, but if we're, uh, I, it, here's the thing. If I'm going to, I'm going to compare, I'm going to, I'm going to put the blowjob and the food in the same m metaphor here, right? Mm -hmm. If there's a chance that it's not going to happen, I'll just go with what I know. <laughs> well, how does that apply to the blowjob? Yeah, like if she, if I gotta, like if she's just, if I'm gonna get the blowjob, I'm just, oh, it's, the blowjob's happen. it's good, okay, it's good, just, she's into it, <laughs> I'm not gonna get all scratched up, that's all I care about. <laughs> How many people have scratched you to where you say, don't get, I don't like, wanna get well, scratched yeah. up, <laughs> I've gotten scratched a couple times, I've been, I've been scratched a couple times. <laughs> He's getting blown by vampires. There's a crack vampire sucking your dick. Oh, baby, the fang. The fang. The fang caught my scrotums. <laughs> fucking Ed getting fanged up, boy. You, Crystal Meth, fucking Johnny Rotten getting fanged up in the well, old I, room. I think the. Uh, I think that they go hand in hand because if she's not into it. Yeah. Usually that's when I get scratched up. So there, it's <laughs> <laughs> so you associate yeah. an enthusiastic behavior with yeah. literally <laughs> fucking scarring your body, yeah. right? So maybe maybe I, it is even simpler. Maybe that is I. You're right. I am complicated. It's yeah, simpler you are. Than I was even yeah. making it. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Uh, I was thinking about the gig part of the show, I'm trying to figure out like out of the thousands of gigs I've done, I. I should be able to have a story for every episode for four years, right? 52 weeks in a year. Easily, I could figure out a thousand stories from 10,000 gigs over the years, right? Uh huh. And I was like digging deep, long, like deeper than I should have to. Right. And I remember I played this bar gig in San Diego, like North, they call it North County. So there's San Diego, and then if you drive 30 miles north, there's North County. And it was like a one-off bar and i'm pretty sure they let underage people in oh sure like under okay. 21 yeah, yeah, yeah and i don't know if there was like a cocaine ring but the owner who you know booked it was kind of like he was young like he was like 30 but okay. everyone was like 18 uh-huh and he was really jacked but like in a weird retaining water steroid kind of way okay and you could tell he was perving on a lot of these girls, but he had like a boat. So all these young smoking hot girls would show up to this comedy show and there'd be like 70 people deep and they would just fucking talk yeah. and go behind like where the stage was and yeah. do blow behind this divider. Yeah. So you'd literally be on stage and, and you just hear girls behind. yelling at each other yeah. like, oh my God. Just snorting rails, dudes like, go yeah, yeah, hit it. There's just all these dipshits around me, Ugh. and I agreed to do it. They were like, "Will you headline it?" It was like one of the only gigs, you uh -huh. know, that was headlining. It was yeah. bullshit, but it yeah. just meant more minutes, right? How many years in were you? Oh, I was probably like three, three okay. years in or something yeah, yeah, like that. Okay. And I get up there, and this chick that I, <laughs> do you remember this shit called Hot or Not? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I met this girl off of Hot or Not. So for those of you that don't know, Hot or Not was a website where you could rank people on a scale from one to 10 if they were hot 
or not. Was that like 2000? That was like 2001. Yeah, like three. I think that around this era for me it was like 04 or something yeah, like that. Okay. Uh huh. And if you like ranked each other on a certain way, like a certain level, you could message. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And I met this girl from oh, I didn't Flor- know you Fort could, Lauderdale. Uh, yeah. Contact you could, these you, women. Well, you had to have an agreeable situation. I think it was a. If you rated each other above like a seven, you opened up a chat with one another. Oh, okay. You I feel think like I was rant. looking at something that was just rando, uh, just images stolen from the internet. Then you would just, it, you know what I mean? It was, yeah, the, it was I think the thing I remember was just very uh, misogynistic, I guess, in, in a way where you're just like just rating women for yeah, the sake of rating this women. Yeah, right. This actually forth. had like a back and forth. Yeah, yeah it was back that's, and forth. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was so like a it was called Hot or Not. That was like around uh, Friendster, Friendster yeah, all that exactly. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I met this girl. We start talking. She's going through like this crisis in her life. She's having a total unraveling. And I'm like, I couldn't be more attracted to her. I was just like madly oh, in dude. love with her dude, and crazy? in lust with her. Yeah, sure. And she was yeah. Cuban and Italian. And I remember she would just get, she was failing out of law school and her dad was like a pretty prominent lawyer. And I remember that's how we bonded is like I had just been fired from a job and I was at home all day and she was skipping school, lying and just getting shitty drunk on wine on the shitty webcam with me. Like one of those oh, old school Logitech. Yeah, yeah. It was like a little testicle with an eye in it. Yeah, yeah. You know? It was a huge. It was yeah, massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we would end it up, you know, that one thing led to another and then we're doing like cam sex. And then eventually she's like, I, I want to come to San Diego. She comes, oh, wow. ends up moving in with me to oh, avoid wow. law school, like has a toll, leaves me for some other guy she's working with at a bar down the street. Wow. I'm f- destroyed. I take this gig and these there's like a ton of beautiful women, like just sexy young women, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, their skin showing. It's like the worst thing to see when you're worthless after someone's just left you for some other dude. You just like see those women and go... Oh, it reminds me of my ex who would wear the most revealing clothes and fucking stepped out on me and now is gone. And I, I just oh see. So I went in there. See, I'm like enraged, it, it, dude. Oh, really? Oh my god. You going angry? Well, I was doing. I didn't have any. I thought I was being a like. I thought I was being a fucking Carlin. I was up there just doing <laughs> shit with no premise, like just premise, <laughs> just angry premise, just ranty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And at one point during my set, these two girls go in the back and they're like just blowing rails, and they're you could I could see their jaws like yeah. while well, they're talking, just moving. Yeah. And I go, hey. Save that shit for another time. I'm fucking dying up here. Like, I just remember I was really upset. One other cokehead girl stands up and goes, "You're bitter!" Like just screaming at me how bitter I am. It was the worst, one of the worst gigs I've ever had. Ah, dude, that sounds insane. It was so insane. <laughs> I don't know how these guys scored that much blow. They must have fucking had got rich kids. Oh, dude, rich kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's. That's my favorite when you're bombing and then someone yell like you just get this isolated like everything gets quiet for a second and someone cuts through. Oh, she hated me. Yeah, because I was you not. You were bitter. <laughs> yeah. I was not an accountable person back then either. So I definitely was weighing it all on this woman who it wasn't anyone's fault. We were both pretty awful. I had a joke one time. Uh, I forget all of it, but. It was, I, I said, uh, you know, because my wife is uh, half black, and I had a joke about how, um, oh, it was more about about how, like, guys, um, we would rather, there's nothing worse than, like, commenting on a guy's physique, like, you know, ripping on a guy's physique, and I, and I said about, for women, it's like, the worst thing for women is, like, when someone, like, thinks they're older than they are. Right, like women, like crazy, and the, and the punchline of the joke was, um, that my that um, to my wife, you know, the N word is bad, but not as bad as ma'am, which I, you know, was it was a, it's a B joke, you know what I mean? It's yeah, funny, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, in the right God, I've it, it got laughs at a couple times here and there. I did it one time, maybe it was about the tenth time I did this joke. This black woman in the back of the room goes. Uh uh, uh uh, just uh uh, 
Next. <laughs> just shout next. And I was just like, ooh. <laughs> Uh, I was like, thank you, everyone. Humiliating our lives. It was so humiliating. <laughs> so humiliating. I mean, and that's a joke. I get it. I, I it's, it's walking a line, yeah. but it's a joke. Yeah. It's definitely a joke. It's definitely a joke. There's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. not even close to being anywhere near serious. Right. Plus, Honestly, if you're married to a woman of color. Right. What's the problem it's here? It's not a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not that you have a right to do anything wrong, like say shit about but when you another get race, yelled, but that's a joke. But something like that, I'm only pointing out, like when it is that yeah, I know, I know. prominent I'm to yell. That, this, this, fic, this fictional heckler in my mind that I'm now <laughs> in, fucking in, interacting with in my head as you're telling a story. I'm like choking someone. Yeah, you're like this right lady, now. listen lady. <laughs> yeah, right, it's, Let me explain <laughs> your fucking life to you. <laughs> I mean, I talked to her from the, from the stage for a little bit. We're like, oh. it was fine, but like that moment of like quiet and then the yell, like it was her timing was perfect. Like I oh, have to yeah. give it to her. It was just so uh, perfect that I was just it really it, it, it gut punched me for a moment, dude. I was just like, oh, I lost the breath for a second, and I was like, okay. And then I started talking to her, and it was fine. I finished the set, but like it was uh, it was that. <laughs> When, when somebody cuts through that loud, like even a fucking drunk. What happened to me last night? Fuck. Oh, man. But like when they just throw you man, off your cadence. a drunk is the worst. When they throw you off the cadence, like they're trying oh, to help. Oh, and the rhythm is fucked. Oh, it's like, over. shut the fuck up. Especially if you're on your way. There are certain places in my act that if I'm cooking enough, you can't really mess with me. You can't, right. But there are parts like in the beginning where I'm trying to learn the room. I can't stand when someone is screaming out. I'll ignore a motherfucker for easily. They could yell for 20 minutes and I would ignore them yeah. until I'm established enough to where I can just start yeah, yeah, yeah. filleting their ass right. if I have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I'm not, I'm not letting you fuck me up. I'm going to get to where I got to get to. Yeah. And then once I'm in my rhythm, I'm going to just, I'm going to carve you. Yeah. I, this will not be forgotten. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming back for you. Oh, yeah, my, yeah, yeah, totally, it's going to yeah. be <laughs> slow and vicious. Dude. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, man, <laughs> like I bomb. I remember now bombing so hard in front of those like hot cokeheads. I fucking didn't get a chance to go on the guy's boat. He was like uh, talking me up about the boat, uh, and all these girls were in his boat pictures on his MySpace page. And I was thinking, fucking, this would be amazing. Tag one of these chicks this boat. Get over this other bitch. Find my new girlfriend on the boat. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I just keep, I just keep coasting, baby. Uh-huh. I just get a new chick, move yeah. her in again. I mean, that's what that was always do. my answer. Like, find another one, yeah, move right. her in. Yeah, yeah. Stupid. Stupid. That's crazy. I'm trying to think now. I don't think I ever really lived. I lived with one woman and then my wife. Yeah, dude, I, got a, together. I am a very much kind of love addict tendencies when I was younger. I really so wanted to like recreate moving. my family. I mean, gotcha. I've done some wild shit. Like, even when I moved here, I fucking, I, I don't know what that is, man. Is that, I think it's because being dopey and traditional, like, I'm raised religious. Like, it's weird to be so, I think the word's immoral. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Coming from a very immoral place, mm-hmm. where people are doing very immoral things, right? And still, in the same breath, talk about these values, yeah, traditions and all tradition, that, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like, yeah, for the longest, I was a victim and a perpetuator of this fucking tradition. Yet I'm eyeing up every right. girl in the street. I'm acting insane yeah, i'm yeah, yeah. lusting i'm doing all the things you know that i'm not supposed to but i'm also trying to marry some new girl i've just met it's just like see that's the messiness of that that's lifestyle. interesting i never really had that because i i always um like i never i guess when i was around like i never took a pride in like my ethnic you know, oh, like, I, like I'm, a, I'm a mick, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah, like, yeah. anytime anybody would ever talk, all my friends were, like, Irish, Harans, and uh, Farley. I just love how your dad's response to all that shit. Yeah, dad, right. What, remember that story yeah, you were telling yeah, me? Dad, a, what are we? What do you say? Did I talk about this on here yet? <laughs> no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, we right. We've done two episodes. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. I can't even remember. We talked so much. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, right. So we were in school. It was like third grade. Dad, and, what are uh, we? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, uh, Patrick O'Donnell brought in for like show and tell or some kind of thing like that. But he had a map of Ireland and he had the O'Donnell Castle and then the Harans were like, yeah, we're from uh, Cork County. And yeah. then everybody's like saying where they're from in Ireland. I went home and I was like, Dad, where are we from in Ireland? I don't know. Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. I go, what's McGowan mean in Irish? He goes, it, it's like Smith. He goes, Why do you bother me with this? <laughs> Where are we from, Dad? Philadelphia. <laughs> We're from that plant that produced your grandfather's lounge chair that he yeah. uses in the, the living room. Fucking tasty cake factory. So where you were born. Yeah, I don't, uh, but so like I never, <laughs> Philadelphia, what part of Ireland are we from? Philadelphia. <laughs> a fucking beer in his hand. <laughs> I just imagine him with the, I know he probably didn't, but like the beer in his hand, fucking Philadelphia. <laughs> Quit talking to me. My dad used to do the thing where you pull the pull tabs and you drop it in the beer. You remember those? Oh, they were like uh, that's before, old school shit. Old school shit, yeah. And then I never forget one of his friends choked off. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best. You know, a lot of those dipshits die like that. Yeah, dude. Talk about a working class whole way to die. <laughs> the I mean, epitome right there, dude. <laughs> like a guy doing dumb shit, like uh, dies because the snowblower runs him over. Like dumb working blowing, class shit. Blowing her thumb his off, fingers off, on, off on fireworks. Of July. Yeah. yeah, all that shit. I had a guy uh, I knew or I was related to. He shot his hand off. Shot it off? Yeah. Dude. Just the whole up. hand? Well, a lot of his. Lost most of it? put a lot of shit back on, but it didn't look right. No. It looked like, a, like an Ooh, autopsy. Like, oh, man. Dude. This dude has some gnarly shit. And the fucking, I don't know how it happens, but the nail grows on one of the stumps. <sighs> hey, how much to suck on the, the nail stump? <sighs> I don't know. Ten Come grand? How long has it got to be in my mouth? You got to like. What are we talking seconds? You got to taste what he ate for lunch kind of underneath the nail bed. No, dude. He wipes his ass with that <laughs> hand. <laughs> he has the other hand still. It's Which, just the one hand jacked up. That's just the one hand. And All you right. got to suck the nail stump. Oof. I don't know. I mean, we're talking tax-free walk away, tax suitcase free of walk money. walk away, Su suitcase, suitcase of money. money, clean. Clean. How many seconds in my mouth? Shit. I mean, all right. What's the, what's the lowest I would go? Ten what if seconds. You had to like ten seconds in my mouth. Suck it like a like a dick. Oh, like ew. well, no, just like your mouth though. That's what it is. You got to suck the nail stump like it's a a beautiful prick that you want in your mouth. How much? So now I gotta get in like into this gay you just fantasy gotta, like, too. Well, now you gotta. <laughs> I gotta get like. I got enthusiasm. This is full circle for you. <laughs> no scratch. <laughs> no scratch. No scratching. No scratch. You gotta live by your two rules. <laughs> no scratching enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> Suck the nail stump. <laughs> Let's see how you like it. You fucking. <laughs> when someone tells you to be enthusiastic. <laughs> I gotta be enthusiastic. All right. And no scratch on the nail stump. I mean, walk away, money. I'm friends with this guy on Facebook. I think we could fucking arrange this too if we had the cash. Shit. Oh, so I need to be careful with my answer then. Yeah, I don't know if, if this show takes off and some. I don't you know, know if five grand out on us. I don't know if five grand's enough. <clears throat> Ten. I mean, five grand's a lot of money. <sighs> I mean, you could make five grand. Right. You could make that. I could make five grand. It has to be money that it would be hard for me to make. Right. Right away. Right. For me, it's 25. It'd be hard for me to make 25 like in, in the next six months. 25 takes a while. It'd be hard. So 25 takes a while. Yeah. Uh, or a lot of effort. Uh, but I mean, you're talking about 10 seconds. You're talking about 10 seconds. It's being well, filmed. Well, you made up 10 seconds. Is it being filmed? No. No film. Who has to know about this? Whoever he wants to tell, he's God. his money. Yeah, right. He can he he uh, could fucking be crushing beers, <sighs> but you know what? You might get lucky because he shot it off. He's not like one of those dudes who wants to tell everybody. Right. He probably is like prideful. Right, right, right. So he would set up a GoFundMe. Why would he want to do this? I think he just wants to see another man yeah. squirm. <laughs> Maybe I, he's I, would, be, I fuck. would be squirming. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Maybe he just feels so disheartened about his burden of being mutilated. Well, yeah, and he's just like, he wants take to fuck, it. He's going to talk, he's gonna talk to me like a... Yeah, that like nail a, was jacked, too. Oh, God damn it. 
Uh, I'm going to say 10, but I'll probably renegotiate to a higher number <laughs> if this actually came to fruition. You pussy. Once you say 10, it's on the... Recorder. I need details. I need times. I need. I need to see the nail. I need to see this fucking thing. I don't even know what. Oh, it, dude, it's, it's like a. <laughs> it's posted on his like a a makeshift. God. It's not even in the right spot. Yeah. It's like a thumb where a, like uh, a little fingers. <laughs> they put them back. They put the fingers I, back. I, I think he thrashed them. Any of them, they could. They, they just pieced together what they had left. They're just like put something on there. <laughs> that poor bastard. I think the guy. The guy who did it just wanted to see. If, he could do it. Yeah, right, right, right. It's like Goldblum yeah. in Jurassic Park. You never stop to think if you should. <laughs> <laughs> Nature finds a way. This guy's a fucking mutilated thumb that you're going to suck on. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. I got to make sure I don't run out of money. Yeah, no <laughs> shit, dude. I got I to gotta be fucking hey, pulling this guy up. Hey, we're bitching and moaning. There are people right now sucking some dirty knobs sure. for some nothing money couple hundy yeah if yeah. that yeah a hit or something yeah people do worse that's all i'm mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. you can follow me at josh accardo and you can follow me on instagram at ed mcgowan comedy and uh we'll see you guys again next week yeah talk next week later you can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every wednesday at 12 p.m eastern standard time you can follow us on instagram at working class holes also make sure you watch the full show on youtube all you got to do is type in working class holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.